Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new January 2024 LEGO Dreams Wave, including this set here, which is my favorite of the wave, the Sandman's Tower. Also in the wave is Zoe and Zion the Cat Owl, as well as a tie-in to LEGO Space in the form of Mr. Oz's space car here. We've got Izzy's Narwhal Hot Air Balloon, and finally, Mateo's off-road car, coming all together to be the second wave of LEGO Dreams. Now, when Dreams first came out, it really impressed me with some of the most impressive, fantastical designs yet. Focusing on larger sets, Dreams made a big impact when it launched on August 1st, and they seem to be doing a bit of a smaller wave for January 1st, opening up with some entry-level sets to allow kids to get introduced to the theme itself. But so, without further ado, let's jump right into our review of the second wave of LEGO Dreams. Okay, so this is the entirety of the January 2024 LEGO Dreams wave. Starting off with 71471, Mateo's off-road car retailing for 10 US dollars, 10 euros, and coming with 94 pieces. Next up is 71472, Izzy's Narwhal Hot Air Balloon, with 156 pieces retailing for 16 US dollars, or 15 euros. Next is 71475, Mr. Oz's Space Car, retailing for 30 US dollars, 30 euros, at 350 pieces. Next is 71476, Zoe and Zion the Cat Owl, retailing for 50 bucks, 50 euros, with 437 pieces. And lastly, the flagship set of the wave is the large tower here, 71477 The Sandman's Tower, with 723 pieces and $90 or 90 euros. Altogether, this is a fairly smaller wave of LEGO Dream sets, especially compared to the debut wave in August, but it does offer something a little bit more unique. Now, the one interesting thing is that the only hint of brand and new villains for 2024 is in the form of the larger flagship set, which reintroduces some characters from the original run, but also introduces a character in minifigure form for the first time, in the form of the Neverwitch, a character who did appear in a couple of the original episodes of the season one of the show, but never actually got a minifigure until now and seems to be representing a completely different villainous faction. Perhaps LEGO is just finishing up the wave of season one related sets before we jump into season two, because many of these sets did actually make appearances in Season 1. Obviously, Zion the Cat Owl was a very important character and creature from the first scenes. We got the Sandman's Tower in Season 1, Izzy's Narwhal Hot Air Balloon also appeared within Season 1, and Mateo's car can be rebuilt into his classic hovercraft slash drone mode, which he often uses in almost every single episode. In fact, really the only set that was not featured in Season 1 is the space car here, which features Mr. Oz and Albert in special golden suits, which we haven't quite seen in the show yet, so this feels like more of a show that's related to the upcoming season of LEGO Dreams, whereas the rest of them do feel like older sets meant to just really flesh out the wave and the world. I'm going to start off by taking a look at the smallest sets first and work our way upwards to the larger ones, starting off with Mateo's buggy right here. It's a fairly serviceable vehicle and it feels just fine as a playable thing, but honestly there's nothing super interesting going on with the buggy itself. The coolest thing about it is that the alt build actually has you rebuild it into the drone, which in my opinion is actually a lot more iconic than the buggy format. I guess cars typically do really well with kids, maybe more than drones, so they figured that a car with rollable wheels would be a lot more popular with kids for the front side of the box, but the alternate model, because again all of these do have alt models, is a very TV show accurate version of the drone, which is a really nice inclusion in the set, and one I'm pretty happy they actually managed to feature in, especially because I was very curious if we'd ever actually get that as a LEGO Dream set. Now, the set only comes with one small buildable enemy, and that is in the form of this Dream Nightmare creature here. It's just a little thing to terrorize him, and maybe you can use the drone to combat it when it flies in the air, but it's really just a small thing, and predominantly, the main focus of the set is just on Mateo and the car. Mateo himself is unchanged from his initial appearances. He does not have the cape or the Batman movie waistband type element that he typically has in some of the more kitted out appearances, but given that this is a smaller set, it totally makes sense that you just have the simplest version of him. The set does, however, include my favorite version of Z-Blob, which is the Bionicle Baraki eye piece with eyes printed on it because it is the most TV show accurate version of him. 
Last thing is that the set does include some alternate stickers, which you can choose to use on different parts of the car. I've chosen to kind of just scatter them around the car itself, which many of the Z-Blob sets and Z-Blob focus sets actually do have these alternate stickers, which is interesting because it's something they did for LEGO Hidden Side and for LEGO Ninjago Prime Empire, but it hasn't been something they've done recently up until this point. Moving onwards, we can take a look at the next set, which is Izzy's Narwhal Hot Air Balloon. The transformation feature or alternate model of this set is a lot less radically different than the other one. Essentially, what you do is you just take the Narwhal and you can use it to pull the cart like a chariot instead of like a hot air balloon. Personally, though, I actually do prefer it like a hot air balloon, especially because it reminds me of the Witch's Windship, which is one of my favorite LEGO castle sets growing up. Now, this is just a really cute design, which... For $16 does admittedly feel a little bit high for what you get. It comes with one of the nightmare creatures with transparent pink wings returning from the Lego Elves theme, which kind of fits the overall stylization of the set. And one thing that is nice is that they have recolored the Lego Donkey Kong tree leaf elements in Azure to act as flippers and the tail for the narwhal itself. The mouth does open up, and that is so cute. It's almost like a Pac-Man style of thing that opens and closes, which is a really cute look and feel for the creature itself. You can't quite store a minifigure in there, but you can store some accessories if you want, and maybe if you got really creative and really deconstructed a figure, you could do it, but it's not really meant for a figure to sit in there unless the mouth is perpetually open. Still, it is nice that you do have that play functionality. The airship element of it itself is fairly simple. There's nothing super crazy going on here, and it does come with Izzy with the armor, with the dual molded sword, but with no skirt element, which again makes sense because this is a smaller version of the character, a smaller set, so she doesn't have all of the accessories you would expect. Otherwise, it's a pretty small thing. I feel like 15 is... Albeit a little bit high, but somewhat fair, I will say. It does have a lot more pieces than the Mateo car, which does feel fair for 10, so I think that this is an okay price set. In fact, all the prices this wave are generally okay. Maybe a little on the higher side as we go up, but I don't really have a huge problem with the way that this one's priced, and we can now move on to the next set. Moving onwards, we get to one of the LEGO Space Influence sets. This one actually does have the LEGO Space branding on it, which is really interesting how they have brought that in from LEGO City, LEGO Friends, LEGO Creator, LEGO Classic, and now LEGO Dreams as well for the overarching LEGO Space theming. It does come with a couple of different minifigures, specifically Mr. Oz, as well as a civilian to rescue, plus the enemy this wave actually gets a brand new brain headpiece, which I'm sure is going to be really, really useful. You could use it for all all sorts of different applications for whatever ca crazy characters you want to create with actual gigantic brains sticking above their heads. So that's a really cool print to get. And you also get the smaller figure of Albert the monkey in a pearl gold outfit this time, which is quite interesting. I'm very curious to see in the show what this golden outfit type of thing is about because they really are going all out with the new minifigures of the set, and I guess we'll have to wait and see. Mr. Oz himself has a complete makeover. His beard is actually metallic silver this time, which is quite cool. He has a specialized eye attachment, which definitely adds on to the flair of it. This is the first time they have colored the special space marine armor in pearl gold as well, so that is very cool. New print on on the front for the one by one circle and the armor feels like it could be like an Iron Man armor or something like that. I could totally see this as a superior Iron Man or a golden Iron Man version of the character so that is very cool to get. I'm so excited to see what people use these components for but overall that is what you get for Mr. Oz and I definitely feel like he is one of the most interesting minifigure designs to come out of dreams for this particular wave. It's just a very striking gold design. Jaden the Civilian to Rescue is unchanged from his Season 1 appearances. You can see his dental gear and mouth guard, as well as a sleeping expression on the back. Nothing super crazy going on with this one. Now, in terms of the car itself, the alternate build turns it into a, you guessed it, rover, but because of that, they have this little side build that also comes with the set itself. The entire point of this side build is that you're supposed to be able to remove this partition here, or actually, maybe you're just supposed to pull that out like so, and you can place this on the rover and it kind of acts as a space rover that can be deployed and piloted on its own, which is pretty interesting. You've got a little grabber arm on it, but let's be real, the only reason why this exists is to actually have extra pieces for the alt build, and there were still quite a lot of other pieces left over, so it is just something I do want to point out. For the alt builds of these sets, they do actually have extra pieces left over that are not integrated into the main models. Now the space car itself is pretty cool because there are three different ways you can build it. You can 
either build it as a normal car just by removing all of these extra pieces, it did come with wheels that you can just add on to almost make it a LEGO City car if you swap out the windscreen. This mode is a flying mode, so you can use the wheels as big stud shooters and engines, so you can see on the back you've got a ton of engines on the back which can also spin around with wings, or you could have a giant laser cannon mounted on the top and turn it into a rover, which is a very different design for it, which definitely feels appropriately spacey. One of my favorite new components in the set though is the new windscreen. This is transparent opalescent satin blue, which is a very cool blend to get for the windscreen. It is barely transparent, like if you go up really close to it, you can see through it. I'm not sure how much visibility Mr. Oz is actually getting here, but I guess it makes sense if you're going out into outer space. You might need protection from the UV rays, so it is pretty cool. And I really like how you actually have a pretty simple interior, which again, can allow you to use this as a normal car. And that's the entire point of the LEGO Dream Sets, is that you can take something realistic in the real world and transform it into something more fantastical, which is very, very cool. Moving onwards from that, we can move on to the second largest set of the wave, which is Zoe and Zion the Cat Owl. Now this was a very prominent creature as featured in the first season of LEGO Dreams. It was one that appeared countless times and the set does come with quite a good selection of figures as well. Included in the set are Cooper, one of the main heroes, as well as Zoe herself, with a cape, which is quite nice, it's only the second set to come with a cape. Her nemesis, the Night Hunter, who this time is equipped with chains to take down the Cat Owl, Sneak, for the first time in figure form, Sneak was really the MVP of Dream Season 1. He really had the wool pulled over my eyes in terms of whether he was good or bad, so he definitely was one of the most entertaining characters to get, so it's really good to get him, as well as another one of the minions that comes alongside the Nightmare King. Sneak is definitely my favorite character to be included in the set itself because they've actually made a new mold for his body. They call it a dragon mold, which now that I see it, I guess that kind of does look like a dragon, and I'm wondering if that will open up more possibilities of this piece being used in LEGO Ninjago, but as it is right now, Sneak is kind of like a monstrous bat hybrid type creature. You have the bat ears being attached onto the hairpiece, which is not a new hairpiece, but it's a good one to get for the character, and I really do like how he actually has a very menacing facial expression there, although I do feel like one with maybe a slightly happier facial expression would have been better, especially given his role in the show, and it would have been really cool to give him the baseball cap as well with an eye print on it, which is a very important part of his character. Overall, nothing super crazy going on with the side build here. This is probably the simplest and smallest motorcycle you could ever make for a character like this, but I think it works okay. It's just kind of a recolor of the Night Hunter motorcycle builds that we got for one of the other Season 1 sets. And then Zoe herself does actually use the Avatar Firing Bow, in case you haven't seen that. It actually just fires like this. That is not how it's supposed to fire, but essentially what it does is you take the bow, you take the arrow, you stick it in, and you can actually launch it like so. There you go. And it actually just is like a standard projectile, but it is a cool accessory for her to get. And it does actually match what she uses in the show as well, which is quite nice. I've already gone in depth into all of these figures in my Dreams Season 1 set review, so definitely check that out if you want to see an up close and personal look at what all these figures look like. But now we can move on to the actual set. And I'm gonna be honest, the set itself is kind of a mixed bag for me. Some aspects of it really work, and some aspects of it really don't for me. And I feel like the thing that really does not work for me for this figure is the way the head is built. The head is very three-dimensional and sculpted in the show, and here, I don't really know what they could have done to make it better other than introducing new molds. What they've done is they've taken the quarter dome pieces introduced for the LEGO NASA Space Shuttle and printed eyes on them, which ideally would technically work, except for the fact that it is very, very flat. As you can see from one angle, it almost feels two-dimensional. It feels like a mosaic, or like the Spider-Man mosaic set, and you have this kind of owl beak right here, but it just isn't quite prominent enough. It feels like something that is more like a helmet rather than part of the figure itself. I don't know. I just feel like the head is what really brings the creature down, especially when you take a look at what it looks like in the show. It looks drastically, drastically different. However, 
The rest of the set is actually pretty nice. You have the wings that can flap up and down. Each of the individual wings is mounted on a mixel joint or a mini ball joint here, so you can actually angle the feathers whichever way you like. These are the brand new pieces introduced for LEGO Dreams. This time they are colored in transparent, opalescent, satin green, as well as a lime green mix. So it's a nice dual color blend. And you also have those light blue azure feathers that are being used as the recolors of the Donkey Kong leaf pieces. The tail is also quite nice, you can move it back and forth and it definitely does feel like a cat's tail. The way it attaches is a little weird, I feel like that almost is a little bit too mechanical, but if you ignore that, it generally looks pretty good, and the body shaping is okay. I think for the shaping it could have been a little bit better. You can move the paws up and down and back and forth and side to side, which is a nice touch, but I don't know. I feel like the proportions and shaping of this creature definitely leave a little bit to be desired compared to how majestic and how alive this looks in the show. This one just doesn't really cut it for me in terms of a buildable creature, but again, your mileage may vary and that may just be my opinion on the set. I'm definitely curious to hear what other folks have to say about the set as well, but for me, this one feels like it could have used just a few more iterations before becoming really perfect to really look like how it looks in the show, and maybe the model in the show was designed off of this, and they just made it look a lot better in the show, so my opinion is definitely colored based on that, but I don't know. It's just a little mixed to me, and for $50, I'm not really seeing the value here. I'm seeing $40. I'm maybe seeing $45. That's a stretch, but $50 feels a little bit too high for me. But moving onwards, we can now take a look at my personal favorite set in the entire Dream's second wave, and this is the Sandman's Tower, and this has a very, very cool play feature to it. As you can see, there is a knob on the side of the tower itself. Twisting the knob at high speeds allows you to actually spin the top of the tower. It actually does have a very cool hourglass spinning function to it. The clock will actually move, and the crystal will spin on the inside, which is such a cool feature. I love this play feature and it just looks very cool and very majestic as it's spinning around almost like it is a magical workshop that is kind of blending different things together. Altogether, the rest of the build is also very, very imaginative and unique, and it has one of the most interesting architectural designs out of any original theme LEGO tower. Starting off from the base of the tower itself, you have these really interesting gear-like accessories added onto the tower itself. It feels like they are gigantic cogs in one massive clock, which is really cool. And the alternate build of the tower, which kind of transforms it into a fortress, allows you to place these around the clock itself, which I think looks even cooler having them around the clock. Now, there's some nice designs with stickers on the front of the tower itself. Going onwards to the interior for the back, you have a bit of a potion area, a weaponry area, and kind of just a standard stand piece for the hourglass up on the top here. So it's just nothing super crazy to see here, but I do like the asymmetrical design of it. You've got guard towers sticking out of the sides. You've got all sorts of different bits and pieces added onto the build itself, which is very cool. Moving upwards, you have a podium dedicated to the Sandman himself, more on the minifigure designs later, which also has another gear sticking out of the side. Very, very cool how they did that. And there even is a book, which you can see right here, which has some studies on the Neverwitch crystals as well as the Hourglass logo itself. Moving upwards, here's what that mechanism looks like to actuate the spinning function on the tower itself. A very clean and cool looking mechanism overall, and again, one of my favorite things is that you can actually see a brick-built hourglass inside the top of the tower. As I rotate this around, you can actually see studs inside the hourglass itself, and when you get it spinning at top speeds, you can really see those studs just going crazy in there, moving back and forth in all sorts of different configurations, almost as if they are being created to cause some sort of explosion to make a new creative force, which is very cool. Up at the top is a large dream crystal meant to channel the dream energy, utilizing a gold recolor of the LEGO Harry Potter icons glasses piece, so that is really cool to see that feature there. And overall, the spinning top of the tower, while a very simple function, is definitely one of my favorite parts about the entire build because it is just so, so cool how they were able to factor that in. Now this set does include three brand new and exclusive LEGO minifigures. I mean, technically Sneak is also included, which is, of course, the Sandman being kind of the focus point of the set itself. You can see what he looks like here. They are using a recolored element from Lego Hidden Side, as well as used for Mysterio and Energy Nia for the Sandman himself, using a trans blue and flame yellowish orange blend, which are two colors that when I first heard that the colors were being used for him, I wasn't quite sure if they would go together. 
And now that I've seen them implemented, I'm still not 100% sure if it works. It's kind of a weird color scheme, but I don't know, I guess it kind of grows on you over time. But it is a really interesting looking creature and character here. You can see that he has a specialized scope to use for one of the eyes. The other expression is smiling like so, but I definitely prefer this one, which feels just a little bit more magical. There's metallic blue paint on his chest in terms of tattoos and on the band, which is a really cool looking design. And overall, this is a very detailed minifigure. It is really cool looking. I love this overall look and feel. Every time a figure uses this piece, it just elevates the figure beyond. But I don't know, the color scheme of light blue and flame yellowish orange is definitely something that needs to grow on me more. I don't really know how I feel about that, but I guess the orange is meant to represent sand. They could have done tan, but maybe tan was looking too much like Sandman from Marvel, so I don't know. It's just a really unique and bizarre figure. The second character here, also using the Lego Batman movie Joker hairpiece, is Logan, who finally is getting a minifigure form. I do not know if this minifig form will be appearing in the show, or maybe this is just supposed to be a minifigure representation of the character itself, but it is really cool. I like how you have two different expressions for him. We finally are getting him as a full-on minifigure instead of just a micro figure, so it's good to get Logan as a standard figure. I really do hope that we actually get his civilian outfit, though, which is sort of similar to this, but in a more regular outfit because that is a quite nice design. I, I really definitely do want to get that as a standard figure, but overall it's a pretty interesting one to get. Nothing too much to say here, so we can move on to my personal favorite villain who has appeared in this set, and that is the Never Witch. This is my favorite figure of the wave, and it just looks so, so good. The Never Witch is being set up to be the main villain of LEGO Dreams, at least for Season 2, and as such, she has a really intricately detailed dual-molded hairpiece with a crown. The black crown is almost Lord of the Rings-esque, and I really love the design of the crown itself. You have two different expressions here, one with kind of a tattoo on the side of the hair, as well as one without the tattoo, and with the hairpiece removed, you can see just the amount of detail that went into the Never Witch's design, from the swirl logo to the metallic silver outlines of it. It's just such a cool design to see overall, and I really love the look and feel of this character. I cannot wait to see what her minions will look like. We got a chance to see a little bit of them in the show, and they were easily the coolest part of Season 1. Like, Season 1 did a random episode where they went into the fog, and they encountered the Never Witch, and they encountered some, like, dream ghouls and whatnot, and that was, like, the coolest concept episode that they did for Season 1. So if those are the new villains, I'm very excited to see what else we see from them. But yeah, this is a cool minifig design, and I can't wait to see where they go with this. She is also accompanied by a little spider, which is kind of a creepy little thing. Nothing super crazy to say here, but I do like the usage of the pot element as the back piece of the spider for the carapace. And with that, we have summed up our look at all of the brand new LEGO Dream sets, which just released on January 1st, 2024. It certainly is a pretty interesting mixed bag of different items, and one thing I do really appreciate is that LEGO Dreams this time has really gone to give us smaller sets. They've tried to focus on entry-level sets to introduce kids to the theme, and I think they've done that pretty successfully. In terms of giving us smaller offerings that allows kids to just understand what Dreams is, the entire point of the world, and hopefully get involved with some of the larger sets as they grow older, which is definitely always a very good thing. And one thing I forgot to mention, the tower also includes this little bird. It actually does recolor the paddle pieces in the new bright orange color, which is pretty cool. Otherwise though, I think we've basically summed up all we have to say about this brand new wave of LEGO Dreams. Definitely no huge standout sets to me, at least compared to the first wave, which had the Nightmare Shark Ship. That was one of my favorite sets of the entire year last year. This one does have the very cool Dream Tower, but I definitely feel like these sets this time are not quite as exciting as maybe the first wave. I'm very curious to see how the theme does. We know for a fact that LEGO decides the fate of original LEGO themes based on how well the second year and the second wave performs. So we are into it. We are into the second year, the second wave. If these sets sell well, LEGO Dreams will likely continue beyond year three. If they do not, then LEGO Dreams will probably wrap up in three years. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. I'm very curious to see how it does, but overall, a very strong showing from LEGO for this wave. Maybe not quite as strong as the first wave, but still some very intricate and innovative sets that really look good together, and I can't wait to see what else we get from LEGO Dreams in the future. Alright, and with that we have summed up our mega review of all of the brand new LEGO Dream sets, from the smallest ones 
working our way all the way up to some of the larger sets that came out for this particular wave. Let me know in the comments which are your favorite sets, of course. Let me know what your least favorites are as well, and what do you think of the brand new sets for LEGO Dreams, and do you think we will last beyond three years? Thanks so much for tuning in to Duck Breaks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye for now.